Ciao da Milano and welcome back to the IKEA Festival here in Milan. And these are today's topics. Super artist Gali will perform live. I met some of the most inspiring Latin American creatives. And a brand new IKEA book right from the print. Welcome back to the IKEA Festival and the rooftop with the nicest view here in Milan. I'm in the center of Zona Tortuna and the festival is at full blast. And for you who don't know who I am, my name is Ami Bramesi and I will let you know everything that happens at the festival from the whole week. Later tonight we have an exclusive live show with Italian rapper Gali and the fans are already here and they are excited. You guys have been in the queue for a bit. Are you excited? Yeah, of course. We are here for uh, DJ Dev and Gali, and we can wait to see them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so much people here. Uh, describe for me, what's the thing with Gali that everyone loves? I think it's the mixture of culture. It's uh, belonging to the, the culture, Italian, mixing all the people. And uh, I think that that's why there are a lot of uh, a lot of guys waiting for, uh, for Gali and DJ Dev. What type of message would you say that Gali has? Maybe uh, it's like a multiculture. He unites multiculture young people here in Milan. He is from Milan, so uh, it's good to be here today. So how are you feeling right now? Excited. Yeah. And we really love IKEA, but also the artist that is going to perform, Gali. Yeah. So we are so happy to be here. Describe this artist, how is he? We like it because uh, he is true and uh, at the same time uh, he's, he's so polite. So this is the qualities that we really like of him and he is a big artist for sure. You're here for the ice cream or you're here for Gali? Uh, both things. <laughs> Honestly, Gali and ice cream together, priceless. Perfect. A, dream. a whole dream. <laughs> But I've never seen this long queue for ice cream, it's a good sign. But tell me about Gali, how do you feel about Gali? He's a very good person. I like him, I like his music. He has strong values and he tries to connect with people, his fans, but not only his fans, also his community. I mean, I think he's a huge representative of Milan in this period. And he represents everything that we're feeling, so it's great. How do you think it's going to be here tonight? Yeah, I, yeah, very crazy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you and have a lovely evening. Now ice cream and gali. <laughs> All right, so back up on the hot rooftop here in Milan, I have a guest with me, because this year IKEA released this brand new book called Us and Our Planet. It's a book where we explore the life of people living all around the world and how they create happier and more sustainable houses and way of living. And with me, I have the editor of the book, Macy Skidmore. Welcome up here. Hi, thanks for having me. How are you? I'm great. I am warm. You're very warm, right? <laughs> but it's a nice view. It's gorgeous. So tell us about creating this book. Give us a little tour because the book takes us all over the planet. How was it to make the book? It was, do you know what? It was an amazing experience. Uh, we started out thinking about life at home and looking at IKEA's history of home visits. So I had no idea when we first began that uh, since the 50s, IKEA has been visiting people in their homes all over the world right. doing research studies. And I was fascinated by the process. I spoke to some people who've been visiting people in India, in Europe, all over the world. Right. Um, to find out what questions they ask and what they're looking for and what it is that they want to find out. We decided to kind of copy that format and to mm -hmm. go visit people in their homes in countries. We went to Moscow, we went to Bali, we went to Beirut, we went to Mexico. And we were really interested in thinking about home, not as a physical and geographical space, but as a concept. So mm -hmm. perhaps home is the apartment you live in. Perhaps it's your local park. Perhaps it's your workplace. Perhaps it's a space that you share with your neighbors downstairs. We decided to structure the book around 12 life visits. And mm -hmm. that's what you see. Right. And I mean, you, you met a lot of people and the house visits. We were talking about this yesterday. Soon they've made one million house visits around the right. world, which is crazy, obviously. But you choose these 12. 
What made you choose them? We decided to speak to, we really wanted to speak to a huge array of people. We wanted right. to speak to um, activists, to artists, to entrepreneurs. We spoke to athletes. We looked at families. We looked at people. There's one woman who looks after a forest in Japan, for example. We wanted to have as diverse array of people in there as we possibly could um, and to kind of get a sense of these, the, the little things that make these different ways of living unique, essentially. Right. Unique and like we said, happy homes, but also a bit more sustainable, maybe. Right. Like people can make quite small changes that makes a big change for the planet and for all of us. Like what can you say about that, the small sustainable changes in the houses? So we decided to think about sustainability, not in this super zoomed in, close up, microcosmic way, but instead to zoom out and to think about it as a, a really huge concept. Right. So we looked at sustainability through six different lenses. They were time, space, food, rest, play, and togetherness. Um, we look into the nitty gritty of people growing their own food, for example. Right. We look at how we use play to learn. We look at the spaces that people live within and the different ways that we use those spaces. Mm. Maybe you uh, have a te super teeny tiny apartment in India, for example, right. like one family that we spoke about. Um, but you, every night after dinner, you move all of the cushions and the plates aside so that you have space to dance. Mm. We wanted to think about all of these different things and to um, to really kind of interrogate what it is that makes our home sustainable. So mm. to think about sustainability in terms of um, the spaces that we use, right. the, the time that we spend in, the, in them, to think about rest, to think about all kinds of different things. Mm. All right, Maisie, thank you so much for telling us a little bit about the beautiful book. It's many beautiful photos inside of it as well. So it's a very nice book. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And we're going to continue getting inspired, but this time by some creatives from Latin America, who has a very interesting collaboration with IKEA down at the festival. Part of this whole IKEA festival that I think is very interesting and inspiring because I like to meet up with my family, party at our home, and apparently we're getting some of the inspiration from Latin American creators to do just that. And we're standing in front of a wall that is being created this day, and I'm standing with two of the creators that are part of this whole collaboration. Hello, Ledania, what, what is happening behind your back? What is this? Um, I want to introduce Europe, the colors of Latin America, all of the carnival situations, like when everyone is happy and exploring all the outfits that they can find. And for sure, I do this character in this moment that uh, she's not uh, having just one color of skin because it's diversity. I was just like uh, trying to do some uh, different uh, persons and an animal because most of the carnivals have a lot of masks of animals and power animals that uh, bring us the culture of um, our fauna in, in Latin America. Okay, so tell us, like, here we understand we have the colors, we have the diversity and strong power animals. What do we have right here? Well, I'm all about mixing and matching prints and patterns and colors and contrast. I love working with abstract um, interpretation and to mix. We met here in our collection. We've been working together online uh, for a year and a half together in the same collection. It's an honor to paint along, alongside her because I admire a lot her work. And now we are merging these two different languages that are both colorful. We love how everything is like connecting and we have get along very well and it has been super nice. It's so nice. And all of this to me sounds like a party, right? It does. Okay, so I'm bringing with me colorful and happiness and more parties from our Latin American creatives. And I'm thinking maybe we will talk to about something similar here, because I'm standing back on the roof with Sweden's happiest professor, Mikael Dalian. I, I, can, I can say that you're the happiest. Right now I am, definitely. Yeah. But you know a lot about happiness. Yeah, I'm trying to, to learn more and more. I'm an economics professor with a focus on happiness and welfare. So yeah, it's my job. Well, it's nice because when we're talking about sustainability, we're mm -hmm. talking about the future. I mean, a lot of people carry around a lot of anxiety regarding this. Yeah. Are you positive or are you anxious? Like, how does it look for you on this scale? Yeah, well, we you? talked about that in the podcast today. Yeah. 
that the future needs to be playful, needs to be fun for us to want to get there. Right. Instead of digging our heels in and saying, I don't want to go there, then we'll solve nothing. So I think it's our opportunity and our responsibility to have fun, be playful and experiment. And like you said, the podcast, you were here having a live podcast, mm-hmm. which is sort of like being a rock star these days. I mean, obviously, it's like you go on a live tour with your podcast. I try. That's I great. try. And now you're here in Milan. I mean, obviously. Happy. <laughs> Happiness. Happy. <laughs> but tell me a bit more about the Oracle podcast. Well, it's about the future and having a positive outlook on the future. It seems grim. There's a lot to do, but we need to focus on the positive. So that's kind of what it's about. And then one oracle usually gets center stage and talk for it for about 15 minutes. And then on occasion, like now, we go on a festival tour and do it uh, in a team of oracles, which we did today with a designer and a uh, reporter, journalist and a happiness professor. All right. Yeah, and I listened to a bit of your talk. Mm-hmm. You had uh, Ilse Crawford, the yeah. designer, and mm-hmm. you had Macy Skidmore that mm-hmm. we're talking to uh, up here on the roof as well. Super cool. With the book. Yeah, super mm-hmm. cool. Both of them super cool. Yeah. But you asked them one question that gave me a little scare. Because you were talking about home and you were talking about, like, describe your first home. And I was like, oh, thinking about my first home. Mm-hmm. But then you started talking about your last home. That question was heavy. <laughs> what, what was the thought about, why did you ask that question? Well, well, well two parts to it. One part just to, to, to get that existential instinct and realize I don't want to get to the end station, my last home, because we kind of, I believe, stick too long to one place mm-hmm. and just collect and hoard up and everything. I think building, making home should be a skill rather than owning a place forever. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to get that feeling and realizing I don't want to get to the end station already. Right. And then partly my solution is I want to turn 1000 years old because there's so much to discover and then it needs to be sustainable to get Mm. there. Mm. And then the last home is so far off that it's not not anxiety ridden at all. Mikael Dalian, thank you so much for giving me some good feelings about the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now we're going to, we have to look back a little bit, even if we bring in this feeling about the future with us. We're going to have a throwback time from the IKEA Museum. Ciao, hey son, hello. I'm Pio from IKEA Museum. Today it is throwback to the time when both Ingvar and IKEA was young. Back to 1960, it was always known that our founder liked Italy. Even on vacation, he did what he always did. He asked questions and he took notice of what people told him. Because, as he wrote, we need to take place and participate in people's life. And maybe most importantly, you have to take part with your heart. So what did he find then at his first home visits in Italy? Surprises! He seemed to have been quite shocked and believed that many Italians had Spartan homes. But the big idea he got was, beautiful furniture should not cost a fortune. So in 1969, Ingvar conducted a more thorough study about the life of the many. This time in Vienna. And those gave so much input about people's needs that it helped IKEA developing their concept. Then came Gothenburg and over 300 home visits. A deeper study that actually made IKEA the choice for the many people. And now home visits is a vital part of the IKEA design process. Now we are on our way to our first million home visits. It might be nice to know that it was here that it actually started. Home visits numero uno. If you want to know more about IKEA history, benvenuti all'ikeamuseum.com. I just love these throwbacks from the museum. Thank you. And now let's travel the world again with our home visits from IKEA. Mi chiamo Carlo Ingrassia, Fabio Ingrassia. E noi ci occupiamo di arti visive, facciamo gli artisti visivi, pastellisti, disegnatori, scultori. Questa casa le mura domestiche per noi sono sempre state un luogo dove in qualche modo hanno accolto 
in qualche modo poi mh, tra noi c'è una, eh, una sorta di mh, criptofasia di questo messaggio, diciamo. Il nostro lavoro è fatto di tante pause, quindi tutti in qualche modo ehm, le, le stanze del, della nostra abitazione sono, ci sono servite e, e ci servono per costituire in qualche modo il, il lavoro, una casa. Credo che lo studio sia una casa. Sì, lo studio secondo me è la nostra casa. IKEA is always thinking about every part of your home. So now let's talk to Ilse Crawford. She created a signature scented candle. Ilse, we're standing here inside of the IKEA festival in the place which smells the absolute best because we're standing by this new candle. Can you tell me something about this signature scent? We wanted to make a scent that was you know, in a way directly connected to nature, but also strongly connected to the identity of IKEA. So to do something around wood, Scandinavian wood, the interiors of wood, the wooden floors, the wooden furniture felt clear. So how do you think about scent inside of the house and inside of the home? I think it should be on the quieter side, but I think it should be high quality. And that's what we worked on with IKEA. We went to one of the best perfume labs in Paris and worked on a really proper fragrance with all the complexity that you would normally get from, you know, a top level scent. Thank you so much and have a good time at the festival. Thanks. Well, it's truly amazing how Ilse captured the smell of the Swedish forest and put it into that candle. But anyway, no time to lose. The moment we've all been waiting for. Now it's time for the huge Italian star, Gali. Oh, see. Piacere il mondo, tu come ti chiami? Sono in giro a far danni da miliardi di anni Cosa vuoi dimostrarmi? Quanti calci devi darmi per non dirmi che mi ami? E mi sciogli che acciai con l'effetto che fai Con i tuoi giochetti strani E le tue guerre stellari Tendo Ripeti dieci, centomila volte cose che già so Let's go, non vedi che son stanco, ma con te sono al top, fai male agli altri, pure a me lo so, dovrei lasciarti, ma tu sei lo show, baby. Vedo bene ultimamente, bella atmosfera e bella gente, tra noi non è più come sempre, ma rimango se ti va, anche il tuo cane ora lo sente, farei una foto ma non rende, il tuo male è stupefacente, dammi anche l'altra metà, e eh no, ripeti dieci, centomila volte cose che già so, let's go, e le dai te le do. Sono stanco ma che lo dici, c'è crisi, ma sto fisso. Uh, 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 che ti ho dato tutto, se c'ero io pensavo bastasse, a te che dimentichi tutto, tutto non ha anche me.
Wow, that's a crazy performance from Gali. And next week, you will be able to see even more videos from the show posted on IKEA's platforms. And tomorrow, I will be back with this IKEA Festival show, showing you all the highlights from the day. See you tomorrow. Ciao!